if it takes for me to sit in a jail cell for every child to receive what they need to be able to live, then so be it. I will go sit in a jail cell tonight. Welcome to Slice of Life, a series that shares the art of pizza making with special guests from all around the world. I'm your host, Anthony Camarda, and welcome to the season premiere. On the show, we push the boundaries of pizza making while we learn about the lives of our guests. So, without further ado, for our first episode, our guest will be local hero for children with neurological disabilities, founder of Bethany's Butterflies Foundation, Abby White. Bethany's Butterflies Foundation is a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping children with severe or complex neurological, developmental, or behavioral conditions. Their mission is to provide access to resources and opportunities to improve their quality of life and help them reach their highest potential. Abby, welcome to the show. Hi, <laughs> Very how good are to you? see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. All right. What pizza are we going to be making today? We're making jambalaya pizza today. Jambalaya pizza. Well, without Very further excited. ado, let's slap this apron on oh, and let's get gosh, started. Oh my gosh, it's even got my name on it. Yes, it does. <laughs> let's get going. So for the first thing that we need to do, uh, we're going to be, we're going to have to make a trinity. So we're gonna have to give it like a nice fine dice. So we'll strip it first and then okay. just go the exact same way. Okay. All right, cool. Wait, you go that way with yours? I, I I've always gone this way with mine. Am I, I typically, wrong? no, I mean, you're not, I wouldn't say you're doing okay, it you wrong, tell me, but. You tell me, this, I don't know, you're the one. I would say do it like this. Okay. That's probably your best bet. Just done. so it doesn't rock and slide as much. Okay, done, done. All right, sounds good. So I actually heard. Wow, how did you how did you get these things so these thin so thin so fast? Look, you're working with a professional here. Oh, <laughs> okay. Anyways. Okay. I heard that uh, we actually just talked about this while we were off set. This is something that's pretty interesting that I didn't even know about her. But you worked for WBTV? I did, I did. So when I was in high school as a senior, um, a bunch of friends were in the guidance counselor's office one day and they didn't know what they wanted to do. And they were like, why don't you guys, you know, uh, sign up for this, apply for it and see what happens. They all applied, none of them got it, I did. So they were like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I'll go work in the sports department. Everything worked out. Well, I just happened to be really good. Okay, am I just like yep. doing it like this? You just this? slide it right in. There oh, you go. I like this. Okay, this is fine. Nice. Oh, and I just about stabbed you, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. So basically with um, that, I got the job, I got the internship at WBTV. Well, they were like, okay, we're going to sit you in this editing, um, editing booth. And I was really good at it. And I was like, oh, I'm actually really good. Might actually so have they were something like, here. Oh my God, thing, you know? So they were really excited. So yeah. I was sitting at dinner, I'll never forget. I was sitting at dinner um, with my parents one night in our house and the phone rang and it was the um, executive producer for Football Friday Night WBTV. Oh, okay. And he was like, listen, you're really good at what you do. We'd like to offer you a job that actually pays. And I was like, done, wow. done. Like it was Look at a that. minuscule amount right. of money. But I was in high school, so I was like, oh yeah, I'm like, that is crazy. This, is it. Yeah. Okay. this part takes a little bit of technique. Okay. Just getting it I'm nice trying. and thin. I'm just slow. <laughs> not a okay. problem. Don't worry. We're taking our time here. I'd rather you take your time and not lose a finger than I, okay, have to yeah. rush to the hospital and yeah. cut this early. No, no losing so. fingers tonight, okay? I need my fingers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Those are important. See, like, no, I talk so no high. No commenting on how awful <laughs> I am at cutting vegetables. Hey, okay, it could, people. It couldn't no have been any worse than a. Uh, who was it? Was it Kendall Jenner or Kylie Jenner? Did you see the way she was cutting? I think it was like an apple. Was it an apple? Oh, wait, 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 you gotta wait, wait, You got to look up the video. It was the cucumber. It was it, the cucumber. It was yeah, the it was the cucumber. cucumber. It was the cucumber. And it was Kendall. Oh my gosh, yeah. It couldn't be as bad as that. No, I, so, well, I don't know. I might be. We'll this, see. See, I like how you have like the curling finger technique where you don't My dad taught me that. Finger. Oh, he did? Yeah. So, so is that where you kind of gain like a little bit of a cooking background? A little bit. So I was a really, really good cook. Mm -hmm up until I had kids. Okay. When everything kind of changed and my life changed and everything changed. And right. so that's when things got a little, uh, that's when I stopped cooking pretty much. I didn't really cook that much and that often anymore. So did you grow up on Cajun cooking? I did, did? I did. So my dad, he's not Cajun at all, but okay. he loves Cajun food mm -hmm. and he loves to cook. So I think that was always like his outlet on things. Right. Well, he always says that the way he learned how to cook was that his mom stayed home for years when he was a kid. And then in fourth grade, went back to work. And when she went back to work, they kind of, him and his sister um, had to learn basically like how to make food. And so he just started cooking and she started cooking and now they're both really good cooks. She's an amazing baker. He's an amazing cook. They do great. 
That's awesome. I suck. <laughs>、okay. like、that, and then a little bit of olive oil. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the Cajun seasoning. Okay. Add a little bit of olive oil. Oh my god. Like that. Okay. And then. That's a little. All right. You say so. <laughs> <laughs> Get it at a medium heat. Let that brown for a little bit. And then same thing with the Cajun Trinity. Okay. We'll just pop that on like a medium heat. You said that you work at a high school, correct? I work in a high school. I do, well, it's actually sixth through twelfth grade. I am discipline support. Discipline support? I did, I'm the discipline support.、Oh, and、boy. then I am also the intervention specialist. The building that I'm in is where all the performing arts is.、Mm -hmm. So I can walk downstairs, and if I go to, if I go straight ahead of me, I can watch kids singing, getting ready for a musical. I can walk further down the hall and take a right and listen to kids playing the violin. Or I can even、um, go to the left, and that's our band room. And that's where the concert band plays. And d o they're amazing. Well, next,、um, we've got this rice that's starting to brown, so we、okay. could dump some water in there. All right. And we can see that the Cajun Trinity is almost at the point where the onions are transparent, which means that we can start incorporating the sauce. Okay, perfect. So, let's do it. Let's get this water in here, and we'll get this lit up, and we'll let this sit until it's ready. This looks like it's about ready. So, let's grab our ground tomatoes, which I left over there, if you don't mind. That's、Perfect. a lot of tomatoes. Yeah, we're only going to use a lot of tomatoes. So, how、like、many pies does that usually make? This? That is a good question. Honestly, it's so it's six pounds and nine ounces. And there's what, 12,、uh, 16 ounces in a pound? Yeah. So, typically, when it comes to. Sorry, I should have told you that. You're fine. There's a little bit of splash. It's all right.、Um, typically, when it comes to a pie, we do about eight ounces of sauce. So, you're probably looking at like 18 to 20 pies that you could get out of. That can. Sweet. There you go. Oh, great. All right. Stop. So it looks like our sauce is just about done.、Um, and then for the rice, now that we're fully complete and it's fully cooked, all we got to do is fluff it. Okay. So the water is fully incorporated into the rice. So you simply just do that to、okay, make sure you、it. get it all set. It looks good. It does look good. Yeah, we did a solid job on、look、the rice. Look at this. All right. We're gonna.、Um, Are we doing it like with a slant? Exactly. Okay, so this piece we don't want. There you go. See, you, you then, remember. I remember. All right. This stuff is so good. I know, right? The fact that. I think you did the sausages better than I did, to be honest. See, you still got it in you. I got it. You、it's、still got、somewhere. it. I gotta find it. So, what do you、uh, what do you typically like to do when you're outside of work and everything? How do you how do you、I、kind of decompress? I love going to breweries. Really? I love breweries. Okay. Yeah. So I love beer. I love craft beer. And then I also love being outside. Like sitting outside is my just thing. I just I love being outside. So.、Um, Hiking or just like going on the greenways. Like, Charlotte has such good greenways here in Charlotte. So, lots of those.、Um, so, yeah. Now, you're going to do that with your fingers? Yeah, but I'm obviously going to wash my eyes afterwards because、mm, I、okay. would much rather not、so、can we, touch it. Can we talk about how we can do it this way too? <laughs> That's、uh... <laughs> All right, I'm going to do that too. <laughs> you、And、cut then... the tips off of yours on each end? Yeah, you can do that. Cut the tip, and then we'll cut the、uh, onions about like right at the white, because、okay. we're gonna use the green oh, part. Oh, we just want the green part. Correct. Okay. So. Can I be a little OCD? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, do go what you gotta do. I'm just gonna do it like that, and then you're basically just gonna flip it. Okay. And I'm gonna. Oh, okay. You really just want the green, huh? Yeah, you just want the green. Oh, well, then the I、green. just freaking messed that all up. I wasn't gonna say anything. Well, you're supposed to say something. <laughs> you're supposed well, to be teaching me. I'm ready to eat this pizza, y'all. I know, I'm getting hungry. Okay, I'm really hungry yeah, for real. Yeah, we're, we're right around the corner. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. We're right around the corner.、Let's... So, where did you learn how to cook? So, I actually,、um, it was mainly for my father. My mom can cook, but my dad is the one that obviously. Remember,、he's... your mom's watching the show. <laughs> Just... <laughs> you want to press 
onto the edges, just like this. Perfect. And you want about a half inch thickness so that way you can get a proper crust. Okay. See, that's good. We'll try the stretching. So you just want to take your hands and just be nice and gentle with it. Wait, and you're just you're going pulling. Pull, push. Pull. pull. There you go. Push, yeah, yeah. Pull, push, pull. And then pull. you'll just want to rotate the dough okay. around as you do it. So put, wait, push, pull. Oh, I'm yeah, messing see, it all see, up. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it feels ah! a lot harder than you would think. You put all the weight on your fingers and like just the back okay. of your hands, and you just want to toss it and try to keep your hands away from the middle as much as you can so that way it doesn't get too thin. <laughs> going so well. Okay, yours is looking really well. Mine's looking no, yours, a disastrous yours is good. mess. So now, let's go ahead and slap it on the peel. Okay, it's on there. Very Look, nice. Look, it actually came out. Oh. No, what? not a problem. Got a freaking hole. That's Who good. Who suggested that I do a good <laughs> <laughs> No, it's good. There you go. <laughs> okay. So now, one little sauce, okay. put it on top, and then you just rotate like this. Why do I feel like I need more sauce? Am I wrong? So now you're literally just gonna grab your cheese and you just okay. wanna spread it across. That's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Got it. Okay. So now take some sausage and our- Peppers? Red peppers. Okay. And we'll do the same thing. Okay. Right, sausage, all right. This is like self-diagnosis here. I, I know, mean, right? This is bad. No, seriously, mm -hmm. I get, especially with things like this, when it comes to pizza, like I always want it to be so circular and everything to be perfect. Yes. Like, I'm just, I'm the same exact way. Okay, good. All right, I'm glad I'm not alone here. All right. So it's here, give it a little twist, and then get it off All like right. that. There you go. There you go. You got it. Did I get it? You got it. Boom. Done. We're good. Let this heat up a good bit. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna do that because I will have shrimp everywhere. Hey, not a problem. Train professional. We got it. That's not what you want. That's not what you want. To <laughs> yeah. So it looks like these are just about ready for us to put it on the pie. So we're gonna kill the heat and let that okay. sit there for a second. Okay. I went ahead and I already pulled out the pies just because I didn't okay. want them to get too Burn. dark. But okay, exactly. let's do it. But let's take a look. Let's see how you okay. do. Oh, nice. Okay. You actually it, did it's a pretty not good job. Bad. It's you, not bad. You absolutely killed it. Just keep a nice even layer. Okay. All throughout. That part on mine. Okay. Go for it. Go. For and it. then you can just take the spoon and sort okay. them all out. Perfect. Let's get these serrano peppers. Okay. I'm gonna grab just a few. Bring them across. Okay. Boom, like that. Okay. Let it finish on the bottom, and we're good. All right. And then I'll do the same Let's thing for yours. I'll grab. Okay. Yours. Very nice. Nice. I can't believe I actually made this. Like, I'm like, they, really impressed. They look so good. They really do. Bam. Garnish. There we go. All right. Nailed it. Did I? All right. Nailed it. Nailed it. He said I nailed it, guys. I nailed it. Here we go. All right. It is time to sit down and enjoy our pizza. We made it. We did. We Look at made this. It. this. This is amazing. This looks really good. Looks I mean, amazing. So, I would have never thought jambalaya pizza. Seriously, I'm not gonna lie. that's the thing. That's what we try to do. We try to bring people outside of their comfort yeah. zones. But then, in the end, we want to make something that we've built together that we can enjoy. And here it is. I love it. I'm Absolutely. excited. All right, let's dig in. So I'll let you take the first slice. I'll go after you. <laughs> can uh, can somebody grab napkins? Thank you. All right, first bite. Everybody knows the rules. Everybody knows the rules. Let's cheers to it. All right, let's do it. Cheers, cheers to building a project together. To building a project together. All right. Here we go. You're on to something. <laughs> I was not. I'm going to be honest. I was like, mm. 
not so sure about this. Rice on pizza. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you guys, we I push cannot... boundaries. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. You totally push the boundaries on pizza making, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I thought you were crazy for putting rice on a pizza because mm -hmm. I was like, rice and cheese is a no-go for me. That's no longer a thing. It's so good. The I cannot is... wait to have all the people that I think are going to hate, that would think would, this would be so gross, mm -hmm. try it. Now I want to hear okay. your final rating out of 10. I do this with all my oh guests. Oh my God. I want I want your solid rating. We're going to hit the stamp. All right. I'm, I'm willing to give this one like a nine out of 10. I love it, nine out of 10. And to be honest. Nine out of 10. I should probably just give it a 10 out of a 10 because yeah. I can't even think of anything that I really don't like about mm -hmm. it right now. This is the first time you ever made a pizza and mm -hmm. it literally looks like something you could sell in a restaurant. You did a, you did a killer job. I'm, that's all I cared about. I know, right? That's <laughs> awesome. But yeah, I mean, we've done so many of these in the past. Like even just going back on like the other pies we've made, I've, we've done Chick-fil-A pizza with like Chick, like Chick-fil-A sauces, mm -hmm. the base and cheese and everything, the waffle fries. Oh yeah. We've done okay. s'mores pizza where you oh. literally take like marshmallow fluff and like chocolate and everything. Like we, we really try to find a way to make something that sounds so mm -hmm. out of out of this world and but still make it work in the end. You know who would have liked that one? Which one, the s'mores? The s'mores. Who? Bethany. Oh really? Oh my gosh. Oh my god, yeah. S'mores yeah. were her thing. We made it this far. We did. We really did. And we now did. it's time to talk about your life and Let's talk about my life. Just yeah. go through your life experiences. That's what the show is all about. We've, you know, we've made pizza, but there's so much more to just what I do and what you do. You know, there's a connection between between that. So let's let's have a conversation. And I got a couple of questions. For you. Yeah. So obviously you're the founder of Bethany's Butterflies Foundation. I am. So how did that all start? Who, who's Bethany? So Bethany was my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, Bethany was uh, born and had, we had no idea that really anything was wrong with her at birth. Um, and then uh, she was named after her aunt, which everybody's like, you named your kid after your sister in law mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'm like, yes, I did. And I'm proud of it. Um, could not have come up with a better name. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <clears throat> but she was born and everything was fine. And then at 11 months old, we had just moved into this house. And uh, I came around the corner and I said, boo, we were playing peekaboo. And I said, boo. And Bethany dropped into a seizure. And it was the very first one that she had ever had. I will never play that game with any other child ever again. <laughs> it, it traumatized me for sure. Um, but uh, that night, I thought, OK, well, the next day she'd gotten sick like she had had a fever that night like i was like oh she's just sick kind of thing the doctor thought she was sick um and we just didn't know she was getting sick that kind of thing and because a lot of kids get have a seizure when they're having a fever that's really high right. and so that's kind of what we thought and then the next thing you know it was like she had another one and then she had another one and then she had another one but it was weird because she had one at 11 months old and then she didn't have one for several months and then she had another one. And then she had another one. And it was just like constant after that. And then um, when Bethany was about two and a half, um, a doctor came in our room. I'll never forget, we were stuck in this tiny room because there was no other rooms left in the hospital. And this doctor came in and just looked me in the eye and she goes, I am so sorry to tell you, but your daughter has intractable epilepsy. And I was like, intractable what? And I had only heard that word one other time. And it was crazy because we lived in this tiny small town in South Carolina at the time. Um, and one of my neighbor's sons had been airlifted from his um, daycare to Levine Children's Hospital in Charlotte for a horrible seizure. And I was this part of this little mom's club, cute little club thing. <laughs> and so, um, we were giving her meals and sending meals to her, and it was the only time I had ever heard of the word intractable epilepsy. And I was like, my kid has come again, what? And I was like, in this tiny community, there cannot be more than one child that has something so rare. Right. And sure enough, Bethany did. And uh, she continued to grow, and we didn't know at first what Bethany had, and it was years down the road before we learned that Bethany had something called Dravet syndrome which is a catastrophic form of epilepsy. And um, it's uncontrollable. And definitely when you're sick, it's worse. 
um, to get the seizures to stop, they usually have to intubate you. And even during intubation, when your brain is completely basically shut down, you know, and you're induced into a coma, um, it still can, you can still be seizing through it. And it's just horrible and it's life changing. And it's something that has changed me not only as a mom um, or as an adult, but as a person and human being in general. Because watching Bethany suffer, but yet never act like she was suffering, was what has made me be me today and changed me to be who I am. Over the course of 11 and a half years, Bethany would experience thousands of seizures and countless doctor visits, intubations, and more. Despite her setbacks, Bethany continued to thrive in every opportunity she had to have fun with her friends and family. After many ups and downs, her health worsened. Bethany became tired and no longer wanted to fight anymore. Friends and family began visiting to say their final goodbyes. Bethany's last request was to wear her mother's wedding ring for her final days she had left. On Saturday, May 8, 2021, at 9.50 a.m., Bethany Joanne Childers took her last breath. You know, Bethany's in, uh, impacted so many people in so many ways, and she's, you know, she lives within all of us in more ways than possible. So um, she's, she's definitely looking down on us and taking care of all of us. <laughs> so, um, so with my next question, as I recollect myself here, <laughs> when you hear the names Senator Grassley and Molly Grantham, what do those names mean to you? <laughs> well, Molly Grantham helped me. Mm -hmm. Senator Grassley was the reason I did it. Mm -hmm. um, Senator Grassley, I feel like I sat in his office for hours mm -hmm. trying to explain something to him that he would never understand. Um, and to this day, never, I don't think still understands. Basically, we had tried and exhausted all the medications that we could have across the board for epilepsy and nothing else was working. And there was this beautiful little girl out of Colorado named Charlotte Figgy from, um, if anyone knows what realm of caring is, that's what it is, or also known as Charlotte's Web now. Um, and it's a form of CBD oil. And I had followed this mom's story. The child had CB, um, the child had Dravet. And um, anyways, they went, as in, in Colorado, they started with the Stanley Brothers. Big thing came from it. Um, but you had to be on a registry. Well, I ended up getting Bethany on the registry. Long story short, her name came up. I got a phone call. The next thing I know, this um, like second year resident, I think, for like Levine, came in my room at Levine, and I will not share his name on, on, on uh, camera. And he literally put his hand on my knee one day, and he was like, Miss Childers, you need to go get on that airplane right now, and you need to go get that. And he goes, this is the last thing that you have left. This is the last chance of helping your child you have left. And he was like in his 20s. And I'm like, done, out the door. Had Bethany taken care of, got on an airplane, and I went to Colorado. Came back, did not come back with the CBD oil. Came back with that in a different way. <laughs> Which we don't need to we, uh, we disclose We also on still do not, do, I still yeah. do not disclose on camera. <laughs> That's all that matters. And so, um, and I had it in my um, kitchen and her neurologist and I were going back and forth on how we were gonna do this and we were doing testing because it does interact with medications. And so basically, uh, long story short, Bethany one night, um, things weren't getting better. Hospice was called in. We were gonna lose our daughter within hours and I, I didn't care. And I was like, you know, and this is one thing where I have to tell her, I have to give the praise to her dad on this one. And is he said, it, it doesn't matter now. Either way, if it works, it works great. If it doesn't, what are we, what are we losing? Because mm -hmm. either way, we're going to lose our child. And he was right. And so I went and grabbed it and uh, I literally videotaped it. And I was like, if it takes for me to sit in a jail cell for every child to receive what they need, to be able to live, then so be it. I will go sit in a jail cell tonight. And the nurse videotaped me as I administered it to Bethany. Um, and 
I sent it to Molly Grantham, who had already been following Bethany's CBD journey and me getting this all the way to Colorado and getting to Colorado and doing all the things and going to Washington and going to the state capitol and all these things. And I sent it to her and I said the same thing. It takes me to have to sit in a jail cell for the children of North Carolina to receive what they need, then so be it. And, um, and I hit send and I sent her the video. And uh, it was 11 o'clock breaking news. First story of the night, of course. <laughs> sitting to Abby to jail, first thing. So um, I got a coffee now. Yeah, it's I, was over. Like, I was like ready. I was like, I had showered. I went and showered, got myself ready because I knew where I was headed. And never happened. Never did. Mm -hmm. It never it never did. And uh, Molly said, I got you. You're going to be all right. Even if you do go to jail, I'm going to be like, yeah, you're going to be all right. And so, um, but it never happened. And I definitely, to this day, I receive threats. I receive horrible messages through um, social media and um, about what I did to my daughter. But um, I will forever and always be grateful that I was given six years to the day longer because I told Keith Larson on the radio one day, I don't expect this to be a cure. I just want more time. Mm -hmm. And I was given six years to the day with my daughter. And um, Senator Grassley will never understand that. But Molly Grantham sure does because she stood up at her funeral and did her eulogy. With Bethany's Butterflies Foundation. Yes. What would you say is your mission to strive for what you're going for? And what are the initiatives that you take to do so? We are helping kids with neurological, developmental, and behavioral disorders um, that are complex. So, you know, one of the things that comes along with seizures is major behavior issues because seizures make you sore. They make you tired. Um, you just feel like you just feel like crap mm -hmm. afterwards. So Bethany, um, so that was one of the things I wanted to make sure that we touched on was mental health um, because Bethany had mental health issues due to all of the things that she had going on, and so many of these other kids that we're helping do, they might not have Dravet syndrome, but they have something going on, and this is helping. You know, that's or that's causing mental health issues. Um, developmentally delayed kids um, where they're not able to walk talk um it's insane um so how many things that they might have going on at one time so one of the things is is that we are helping kids right here in our area our mission is to help as many kids as we can be able to enjoy life and live life like it's going to end in 0.5 seconds right um because bethany lived like that she lived like every second and she made every second count and um, I think that I have to give it to my mom on this one because my mom was the one that my mom was the one that first came up with this, and she was like, you know, Bethany is somebody that just lives in a fairy tale world all the time, and she just wants you to be a part of it. And that's what I want these kids. I want them to have this fairy tale of a life as they can have with their families as long as they can have it. And that's what our mission is, is to give them. And I'm sure there's somebody out there that you tend to rely on for you know for that like that safety and security yeah. when you get to a point where you know you're taking the extra step and you're trying to strive and you start getting tired so who would that person be that really that keeps you grounded in times where it gets hard Bethany, Bethany? Just every day there's something in my day you know I I know we talk about the foundation but as yeah. during the day I work as a, I, I'm at a school and um, it was interesting because last year during um, the entire school year, every day in the afternoon I was on the bus lot. And every single solitary day, during the cold months, which doesn't even make sense, there was this butterfly that would fly all over mm -hmm. the bus lot. And everybody would be like, why is there a bus butterfly in the middle of the winter? And it was so baffling. But yeah, um, it's, it's Bethany. Bethany yeah. was Bethany every day in some way, shape or form has shown me today alone, you know, I had to sign some paperwork and they were like, oh, here's the app that you need to download and you can do all of these things off this app. And I was like, oh, okay, great. What's the app called? And they were like, Butterfly. <laughs> and I was like, Shut oh up, my stop. gosh. And of I was course. like, cause I was of like course. sitting there second guessing myself yeah. the entire time. And then they were like, it's the butterfly app. And I was like, wait, what? That is it insane. It was like, just like the smallest things every single day. She shows me, hey mom, I know life isn't easy on earth without me, and I know your life will never be the same without me, but mom, I got you, and I'm here. 
So how does the foundation tend to engage with their volunteers and the people who are willing to donate in their charity? I believe you guys have talked about a gala before. Yes, um, okay. every November we have a gala. Um, it's the Bethany's Butterflies Foundation Gala. Um, it's where many people come together and basically we talk about the kids that we've helped throughout the year. Um, where we have helped kids with car seats because that's something that people don't think about. We were stuck in the hospital with Bethany one time after having a really bad seizure because she couldn't hold herself up in a seat. So in the state of North Carolina in general, just that's in our state alone, if you can't hold yourself up in a seat, then you don't need to be sitting in right. one. <laughs> so we had to wait until we could get Bethany her car seat mm -hmm. that she needed, a specialized car seat to hold her up that would buckle her in all the way up and down um, so that if we were in an accident, she would still be safe. Um, so we have car seats, we have kids that need therapies, like physical therapies, intense physical therapy, behavioral therapies. Um, we have kids that need to go to different hospitals. Um, we sent a kid to Johns Hopkins Hospital um, just this past um, year from uh, Levine Children's Hospital. Um, one of the fun things we do are the bows. Every December, Bethany's birthday is on December 22nd, and we do a BYOB party. Mm -hmm. This past year it was at the Selfish Punch at South Park Mall. It'll be there again this year. Um, on December 22nd and uh, basically we do BYOB and it's bring your own bow not bring your own beer it's bring your own bow and every bow that um, is brought in goes straight to Levine Children's Hospital or Novant um, Hemby Children's Hospital and uh, Bethany loved her bows bigger the better sparklier the better if you ever want to donate you can go to www.bethanysbutterflies.org and you can go and click on the donate button donate to the organization and we are so grateful for all of our donations that we receive it is a uh, it is something that we are a 501c3 so it is something that is tax deductible and um and we are i am this is my way of grieving you know i started this three months after i lost my daughter i knew i had two options and that was to sit in a closet and eat bonbons and drink all day and just be the worst person ever and for the rest of my life this miserable human being or do as bethany would do and make every day count and um and i promised my daughter I would make every day count, and um, and that's what I'm trying to do. It's, she definitely lives through you. She she lives through you, and you make sure you take care of her. And it's it's giving you more purpose in the world to serve for other people. Thank you. So you've you've done a great job. Thank you. And uh, are there are, are there any projects that you guys have going on in the horizon that's coming up in the future? Yeah, um, we have a lot of things coming up. We, well, we actually just had um, a Kendra Scott event. We do several of those a year. Um, we had actually a Lily Pulitzer event, um, which was last month. Um, we have uh, several different, um, we're doing, some, we've got some stuff coming up with the um, Porcupines, which is in here in Charlotte, um, little league that we're working with now. We've got our gala coming up in November again this in the fall. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got several things. We're looking at a 5K next year. Um, we've got some really cool events coming up. I'll be sure to uh And then of course we have this amazing definitely. watch company that we also work with. Which brings us to our proud sponsor of this video, ATC Watch Co. Use code BBF20 for 20% off your next purchase. If you're in the market for high quality watches with an affordable price, look no further. These timepieces are perfect for both formal events and casual outings with your friends. Offering multiple colors, you'll be able to find the right watch for you. This limited supply is selling out quickly, so act fast. Click the link in the description to get your watch today. See you there. Well, those are all the all questions right. that I had for you. But of course, there is one last thing that I want from you. Okay. And as every other episode that I have, <laughs> we do a commemorative pizza peel at yes. the end that I would like for you to sign oh, in I'd honor of you being my guest and just yes. us having this connection. So here we go. We got the peel. Right. Um, oh, it's upside down. It's okay. <laughs> we got the pizza peel. Uh, let's go ahead, get a signature from you. It doesn't matter where it is. Um, just, you know, pick your poison. All right. Here we go. The signature is awesome. That's mm -hmm. you did a good job on that. Thanks. Here we go. Very nice. All right. Let's get the picture. All right. Good. Yeah. Let's good. do it.